Hey guys, this is UFC fighter Ashley Evan Smith. You're listening to Split Decision out of the 209. Welcome to the West Coast, land of the best smoke. The valley, the bay, and of course, combo. We only combo, top of the line. Get the blood ready, cross the grapes like wine. We are Modesto, it's the West Coast. Now you know 209's a code. We are Modesto, it's the West Coast. Everybody know that we got the best smoke. We are Modesto, it's the West Coast. Now you know 209's a code. We are Modesto, it's the West Coast. Everybody know that we got the best smoke. All right, MMA Maniacs, it's time once again for Split Decision, your weekly MMA podcast brought to you from the Ruloff Family Inc. studios. Sands Dodge today, but the show will go on. Slightly. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for this. It's not going to be good, but thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Tell Is your it friends. Ever? No, not at all. Uh, get us wherever MMA podcasts are broadcast, Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, our website, which is splitdecisionmma.com. You can also find us on uh, iHeartRadio. Like I said, anywhere you can find MMA podcasts, you're going to find us there. Strongboardbalance.com. Check them out. Change the way you work out. Get on board. Strongboardbalance.com. They're still doing their contest giveaway on Instagram. So if you're not fat and lazy like me and you want to win one, you can do that by following Strongboard on Instagram. Also, our second home, mmanews.com. I thought you were white and nerdy. <laughs> Both. Okay. White and nerdy, fat and lazy. <laughs> but you, does that make you wordy? <laughs> wordy. <laughs> uh, joined in the studio today by Killer Kelly and champion once again, Rolando Velasco. The right? machine. The machine. <laughs> the machine. Yeah, uh, thanks for being on, man. So uh, before we jump into all the news and stuff here, you just had a fight. You're still recovering from the fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently the, the guy who, who you fought gave you a cold. Yeah, you must have been sick or something, because I definitely caught a flu right after that fight. So, so thanks for coming in this tight studio and and, and yeah, breathing. Yeah, I just want to share the love. <laughs> you know, I got the champion flu. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I got sick by a champ. So, so tell us about the fight, man. So you went. You were defending your belt up at Tachi Palace. Yeah. And uh, refresh my memory. What weight do you fight at? One thirty-five. So one thirty-five. You are, weight. You come in with the belt. You coming in to defend it, and. Uh, your opponent comes in, you guys square up, you go for it, and you get you get nailed. Yeah. So we we're like exchanging or something. I don't know what happened. Actually, I watched the fight again, and uh, we we're both throwing, and he caught me with a short left hook, and it dropped me right on my butt. Everybody made it sound like I was out, like the my, my eyes rolled in the back of my head, and I was completely out. I don't really remember the fight, but watching the video again, <laughs> hey, it's just not dude. Me. It's hey, like, bro, it bro, like I went, oh shit, really? <laughs> I everybody, did. Everybody was I like, did. freaking out, <laughs> and I'm thinking because we're watching on Sure Dog, it's probably like 30 second delay, yeah. you know. So like you'd probably been down 30 seconds earlier, <laughs> <laughs> not knowing what's gonna happen yeah. next. So yeah. you, if you so you got fight amnesia, you kind of just don't remember a lot of it. Uh, it happens like that with every fight. I do the, no, I do the same thing with my shows. Yeah, like like no lie. What do yeah. we talk about? I have no fucking idea. It feels like you're blacked out. And you're just going in there. You got the adrenaline rush, and exactly. yeah, of course, and you watch the fight later and you see what happens. So how how do you feel that you recovered from from that? I think I felt like I recovered very well. I popped right back up as soon as he knocked me down and took him down and controlled the fight from then on out. So I. I at first, when I was in there in the fight, I felt like it was a, a dog fight. Like it was like back and forth when I was in there. But then when I watched the fight again, I was like, ah, I pretty much controlled the guy for the rest of the fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much Definitely. what I heard talking to these guys. Yeah, at the, I'd say in the second, yeah, you were still trying, I think, like you're filling out his timing and everything. Yeah. And then three, the rest, it was just all you. Yeah. I mean, he, we, he clocked me a couple more times after that, but so, so did I with him. It was just more like. Oh, yeah. Playing back and forth. How does it feel to be a two-time champ now? It's pretty cool. It's better than being an actual champ. Being a defending champ just solidifies it even more. Just, it's, it, I like it. I love it. Being a, a defending champ, that's cool. Any uh, any other calls or notice from any other promotions at this point? Uh, my manager's handling all that. He's just he always after the fight. He's always just asking how I'm feeling, like injury wise. He just wants you to relax. Re exactly. He won't tell me anything that he's trying to work out, like business wise. He'll he'll leave me on the back burner with that. He'll just be on the side doing his own deals on the side. Then once he finally solidifies something, he'll let me know, like, hey, this is an idea or this is a uh, uh, something that we're thinking about. What do you think about it? Then he'll he'll ask for my opinion. That's good business. I mean, he, don't, he doesn't want to get you sidetracked thinking about something that's not maybe exactly. not going to happen. And he knows what your your best interests are, so he's going to work in your best interest and then yeah. call you up. All right, we got an offer. Yeah, yeah, that's a smart way to do things. So what's next? Um, yeah, I, 
Are you out? Are you on medical for anything? No, I'm not out on medical. I mean, I I was given a seven day suspension, um, which you know that that means I'm clear today. (laughs) Yeah, so you could fight today. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could I could get right back in there, depending on who calls up or who wants me. I'm ready to get back in there. Well, you got to fight this cold first, man. That's for sure. <laughs> this, this cold's the first thing. Well, congratulations once again. Thanks. It's really cool. Uh, and Killer Kelly, also in the studio, you were able to announce your next opponent at Invicta. Uh, so can you tell us any more? Because she uh, totally didn't do it on our show. No, 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 no. it did not happen. Yeah. I, didn't, I haven't made the announcement yet. This no. is the first interview I've done since they've announced it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm fighting Amberlynn or um, March 11th at the Tropicana Center. The Tropicana Center in Vegas? Yes, in Vegas. Nice. Yeah. So what are you doing to prepare for it? Well, she I feel like she's very good at um, jiu-jitsu. She has a really good guard. But I feel like I train with a lot of really good people that I'm comfortable regardless where it goes. So I'm not really worried about anything specific. Just mostly just trying to tune everything up, make myself better, instead of just going to what her weaknesses are. Now, this is your first fight since your injury? Yep, first fight in over a year. How excited are you? I'm super excited to be back. Um, I... Honestly, didn't see this day coming at some time, like some point. So I was just like, oh, it's probably not going to happen again. But I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Cool. And and your opponent, how, how experienced is she? Uh, it'll be her pro debut, but she was 11 and one as an amateur. So oh wow. Okay. Fight wise, she has a lot more fights than I've had. I've only had, I think this is my fifth one. So experience wise, she definitely has a lot more. But I feel like her competition level isn't where. I'm at, so I feel like I have an advantage in that point. Cool, and of course we're going to follow you on your journey as you go to that fight, and we'll make sure that we uh, we keep everybody posted about it as we get closer Definitely. to it, without a doubt. Uh, now that that's uh, in the bag, let's jump into some news. Yeah, right. Cool. So we had big fights over the weekend. We had the uh, the the, the Bellator. Keep on to say Strike Force Bellator tent event with uh, Kimbo Slice up against Dadaf Five Thousand. Also, Shermock versus Gracie for the third time. We'll get into those results a little bit later. But uh, if you watch the the fight. <laughs> Can you call it that? Yeah. <laughs> this is like this is what I always say when you got two dads at a little league game fighting. It That's... was worse than that. I've never even seen two dads fire out like this. <laughs> these these guys are bottle rockets, dude. That like, <laughs> <laughs> done. That was it. Ask what we're working on for my fight, just to be like just like these guys. Kimbo Slice and Dad. That's what we're working towards. That's the goal. <laughs> I would tell you you'd have to eat a bucket of chicken, but Joe yeah. Rogan's already in trouble. For making those types of statements. Are you so, serious? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This fight made me actually, like, a, a, a made me feel better about my boxing debut. Because I know I looked ridiculous when I did it, but I didn't look this ridiculous. Every guy I know that's ever been in a bar fight feels a lot better about <laughs> his, his fighting debut. <laughs> so, of course, uh, if you saw the fight, you know Kimbo won. But uh, what happened afterward, which was crazy, all Kimbo had to do to win this fight was literally get out of Dada's way yeah. and let him fall over. Yeah, um, and, they, and they give him the knockdown because he made contact with him on his way down. Because his body made contact with the other yeah, body? Yeah, he like, he like patted him as he was falling from renal failure. <laughs> he pushed him down. <laughs> from, from renal failure? <laughs> right? No, his, his heart, his heart stopped. stopped, man. Yeah. That's renal's kidneys, isn't it? I, that's what I think it was all from the massive weight cut. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah it was renal failure, but I mean, that'll lead to your heart. Your yeah. blood pressure will drop. I should stop drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but word is he's still actually in the, in the hospital uh, under observation. Um, not sure what the, what the future is there. Uh, but obviously, the jokes we make, we do want him to recover. Yeah, we do. We do. But I still don't understand. They said it was from him trying to drop 40 pounds. Now, this is obviously a heavyweight fight. I don't even understand why. He, did he need to come under 260-something? He needed to be 265, and he was like four or 300 pounds. But why? This, this had no implication... It was just so that... that That's just the the limits that were set forth by the Gaming Commission. But it wasn't a real fight. That's (laughs) what I'm saying. It was... It's just like the the Gracie uh, Shamrock fight. It's not a real fight. No, the Gracie Shamrock fight was terrible, too. (laughs) Yeah, we'll get to that later. We'll we'll get to that. Well, I mean, we can talk about it now. Uh, Ken Shamrock is is asking for... uh, I don't know if he's asking for a rematch. But no, it did, sounds like they're they're going to put a rematch together. They, they're he they're talking number four. He asked Gracie to come out and admit that what he did was wrong. Uh, wants to, <laughs> 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 and uh, he wants to appeal to the board too. He wants to, he doesn't want that loss on his record. He didn't want to go out like that. I don't know what he thought was going to happen. He, he thought he was going to win. We all thought he was going to win. I think. Did you guys think Gracie was going to win that fight? Uh, I thought I thought Shamrock was going to win. Really? Just because he's like you must have got a different script than I got. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so I guess we'll see what happens with that in the future if they do get the rematch, and we'll keep you posted. Uh, Andre Olovsky and Alistair Overeem are officially headlining UFC Fight Night 87 in Rotter- Rotterdam. The Netherlands. I used to live on a street, Rotterdam. It's like right now. It's actually that way. No, that way. Yeah. That's yeah. weird because we're on Warmer Dam right weird. here. <laughs> and, they're, and they're talking about how, how like, uh, Alistair Overeem is saying that they, they're not friends. They're not. Not they're not not the same gym. Doesn't matter how friends. many pictures you got of them at Applebee's <laughs> sharing finger foods. They're not buddies. And so that's exactly what the internet is doing is finding as many videos and gifts and pictures they can of them being buddy buddy uh and, and posting Alistair Overeem and Andre Lowski not being friends. Why at, does it matter if they're friends though? Just because Alistair Overeem came out and said they're not friends, and everybody's like, really? Because you guys are practically making out in this picture. So here you guys are sharing a bowl of soup. So are they training at the same gym? Or no, not? they're not now. Okay. They were at one point, but yeah, they're not yeah, anymore. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, so, I mean, I, I like the fight. I don't know what the implications are of it. I think it's going to be the headline of Fight Night 87. Um, both these guys, Andre Olovsky, didn't he just get his ass kicked? No. Yeah, he just got yeah, his ass he kicked. Lost yeah. He just he just lost. It's a good heavyweight fight. It's another one of those fights that should have happened ten years ago. But you know, whatever. Better late than never. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also slated for UFC 197 in Las Vegas, Sergio Pettis is going to go up against Chris Collades. Always fun to see a Pettis in the cage. Oh yeah, good times there. More so Sergio. More so Sergio. I, I'll agree <laughs> with that. Still, still uh, Dodson going back to bantamweight. Going to go up against Manny Gamburian. There's a name we haven't heard in a while. Mandel. Gambier uh, yeah. is pretty quick. This is going to be UFC on Fox 19. Dodson. Dodson's tenacious. Gambarian's quick and strong. He's like a little, little pit bull. Uh, so good lineup there. I don't know why the internet's so slow. I don't know. I don't get it. It's so weird, man. <laughs> weird. And then uh, Michelle Watterson's UFC return is delayed. She injured her hand. Looking for oh, June, no. maybe. Looking for June. The karate hottie. The karate hottie. Dodge will be very, very disappointed. You she like she ha- she has things. fun with it. Yeah, she has a lot yeah, of fun. I don't know if you guys saw my last fight. Like in between rounds, I waved at somebody. That yeah. I was waving at her. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I saw her in the crowd. And I so you know her? her? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, they're, see her yeah, they're best friends now. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, who the fuck is this? Keeps waving at me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. That's pretty much it for news this week, right? Yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> well, I mean, other than other than the the biggest news, the which biggest is, news, uh, of course, Conor McGregor and Nick Nate Diaz are fighting. Uh, that announcement came swiftly, and the internet exploded. Yeah. Like the MMA side of the internet was bigger than Kim Kardashian trying to break the internet. <laughs> like, it, was, oh, yeah. it was just nuts. I've never watched Twitter so much as then trying to wait for them to because, like, like I'm telling you guys, I got it. I got it confirmed. But can we release it? And you're like, fuck it. BJ Penn went with it. I'm like, no, but we don't have it confirmed yet. Hey, BJ Penn's going to take that fall. I'll fall with him. Yeah. I mean, because he was, BJPenn.com was the first uh, English website to release it. uh, Rafael Dos Anos was out. They got it. They literally got it from a Brazilian website and and translated it and then released it on their own site. So if they're going to do that much research and be on top of it that much, then I, I, I was willing to believe it. And of course, we found out for it to be true. Yeah. But why? Yeah. Watching it unfold, I was on Reddit and it was just like, you know, Cerrone, Cerrone's already making weight cuts. He's going. He's got Dolce in his corner. He's going to be at one fifty five by next week. You know, it's like he's already taking the fight, and then they're going to Nate Diaz. He's going to take the fight. No, Nate Diaz said no because it's not enough money. And it and, wasn't even. It was never about money. It was about weight. It was about weight. And then we find out all this stuff later too, which was, which was kind of frustrating. Dodge and I talked about this last night. Dana White loves the smoke and mirror stuff and 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 half truths and things of that nature and. That happened a lot with all the fighters that were called out at the press conference saying that they didn't want to take this fight. Oh, you know. They were never offered it. Right. Well, that's, a, that's exactly it. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Aldo said that he was in training camp and he was ready to fight, and I called him and he said no. Well, no. He, he said no because he couldn't make weight. He couldn't make 155 right. in two weeks. Uh, oh, we called, uh, we called uh, uh, Frankie, Al- Frankie Edgar. Frankie Edgar. And he said no. And he's like, I said no because my back's hurt. I can't fight. Yeah, I mean, and he had told back. Dana three days prior that his back was hurt. Right. Before this even happened. Just oh, making wow. him, yeah, just making him look like like they were chickening out of the fight. Yeah. And, and Connor, of course, backed that up and said, everybody's afraid to, I respect Nate because he's the only one who's, who's willing to fight me. We're like, yeah. and then Faber took a picture of himself with his with his shirt up going. His was at 8 o'clock after everybody already knew that it was going to Nate Yeah, but Faber's thing was like, you didn't even ask me and I'm ready to go. Because nobody wants to see that. <laughs> but I think the people 
people. I think the people who watched the Ultimate Fighter season with those two would you watch think so? it. Yeah, they can go back and run old clips and hype up the fight. You know, sure. it would have been easy. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that this is a bad fight. This isn't a bad fight by any means. But like I said, it's, it was full of half truths. Yeah. Well, in, in the said. Donald Cerrone thing, everybody's like he's a front runner, and then I talked to two guys from Florida. They're like, we don't even think he can be medically cleared to fight by that weekend. Really? Really? Why he didn't do anything in his fight? I know, Sunday? but they give they yeah. give the UFC gives him a thirty day suspension almost yeah. right off the bat. Oh, automatically. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. The standard. Oh, okay. Well, then that. Makes... I mean, he was he only fought for what a minute. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, he just no. He just sat on. He just yeah. sat on the other cowboy and yeah. choked him. It's like he bullied him. In that fight. <laughs> he kind of did. So a lot of a lot of half truths, but the the press conference itself, I'm kind of bummed out that I turned it on in front of my kids. I don't know. I thought <laughs> I, I thought that it would be censored. I didn't know it was like live, live. I thought it was like at least delayed. It was just fuck this and fuck you. And all the, dude, what is it? you got viruses on your computer? It's like porn pop ups everywhere. Yeah, click them off. <laughs> oh, I'll click them off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, press conference goes down. Uh, Conor McGregor doing the Conor McGregor thing, uh, talking a lot of trash. Gives Nate props for actually taking the fight. As we know now, the fight is at one seventy. That's crazy. And I love the statement behind that because you know, from what I could, this is this is from what I could gather that night as it was going down was. The UFC told Nate no at 165 without ever even checking. Right. That's that's it with him. And then so Conor sees it on Twitter. That he refused the fight at 165. He goes, no, not only am I not going to refuse the fight at 165, but tell him, let's do it at 170 so he can be comfortable. Yeah. Ah, fuck it. We'll do it at 170. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's the thing. That's another part of the half-truth, too, is that what we're, what we're hearing is that uh, Nate refused 165. Nate said, I'll fight at 155. I can't make the weight, but I'll, I'll cut if you pay me more. Right. They said, no, we're not going to pay you more. And he said, well, then let's, let's, do, a, let's do a catch weight of... of uh, of 165 they said 160 he said pay me more because i'm not it's going to hurt me to cut that much and they said right. no we're not going to pay you more because he, he already knew he's gonna, what is it 25 or 20 percent purse cut if you don't make weight if you don't right? make weight yeah and that's something i could totally see the diaz brothers doing is like oh yeah fuck it i'll do one 155 show up at fucking 180 yeah, yeah. i missed it sorry here's 20 yeah, because you already bumped your purse yeah. you know yeah. we asked for more money because you know you're gonna take a 20 percent cut yeah. <laughs> that's actually it's like when smart. you sell a car on yeah, ebay smart. bud <laughs> yeah. you ask for four thousand more right off the bat i like the way you're thinking yeah, that way the guy on the other end feels like he jewed you down. Or I'm sorry, I don't think he. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> he worked you down. I'll allow it. Uh, uh, <laughs> at least you didn't say they were rigging anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bad person. So you said chewed, right? Yeah. They chewed you yes. down. Yeah, you know, little bites yeah. off. Little yeah, bites off here and there. <laughs> so, so now we officially have it. It's going down. Uh, UFC 196, the main event, is going to be Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz um, at 170, which has like it has no ramifications for that weight class whatsoever. It has no ramifications for the title. Because neither that one of them has. give a fuck <laughs> about the belt. That's, that's what's weird to me about this fight. And this is what my complaint was. When they made the fight against Rafael Dos Anjos immediately, and, and let's see what you guys think is as fighters. So Conor wins the belt. Usually the champ gets an option at a rematch, which Aldo wasn't given. Or the number one contender gets a shot, which is Frankie Edgar. Frankie Edgar wasn't even talked to about it. Instead, they just they went straight for the super fight, which I thought was it ties up the division for at least a year for doing that, and and also it skips over two very deserving people for for what for money obviously, which was super frustrating for me as a fan. But then this this happens, and this is literally like if you really look at the details, this is a what the fuck fight. It does. It, what does it do for anybody except for a fight and, and money? Like, it doesn't do anything for 170, doesn't do anything for the title at 155, doesn't do anything for the title at 145. Nate Diaz has lost, th what, three out of his last five fights? That's closest, yeah. Yeah, yes. he's, he's gone, he's gone. He's, he's three of six, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't get it aside from, from money. As, as fighters, do you, do you share that frustration or do you see it as just like, you know what, a money fight's a money fight, take it. Yeah, it's just like an entertainment fight. It doesn't mean anything. Just for show, uh, it is frustrating to see that the promotion is going that way. Like, it's supposed to be about you know the champions and who's the best, and you know, like I remember, just like you said too, um, they just jumped him up straight to a super fight. When uh, I remember when Weidman was a, was the champ, he was he was already talking about fighting. You know, what was it John Jones at the time or mm. or something? And Dana White, like literally right off the bat, he's like. No, you need to clear out your division first before you even think about a super. Well, fight. what about Aldo? In his ten years, he asked for a couple fights in the, in a That's weight true. class above, yeah. and 
He was told adamantly no. Right. And then we had the, the how how many years did we go with uh, with Silva and GSP already clearing out their division, always talking about a super fight, never getting one. Yeah. yeah. Just, but, it just seemed like favoritism, like I said. Yeah. yeah. But what's totally weird favoritism. is it's not new for Nate because if you look, a lot of his fights have been catchweight fights. Mm-hmm. Well, because he doesn't ever make weight. <laughs> <laughs> so. So munchies get to him, man. So here's my question about this. Let's just let's get a little crazy here. And let's say Nate wins the fight. Got a He's chance. He's going to win. He's got a chance. He's going to win. Anybody's got a chance in this fight. Yeah. What do they do then? Do they then have to cut down to 145 and fight for the belt again? Well, see, now, no. now this is something I read, too, that if Connor does lose, that this is, this is going to be Dana's way of telling him, go back to 145 and do what you do in your weight class and quit, quit running your mouth. But on the other hand, this is almost... Like Dana say, look, I got these, I got these guys in Stockton, and I need you to handle this. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because we know Dana's like that, right? Because wasn't yeah. wasn't he like that about uh, Couture? And uh, didn't he do the, do something like that for Rampage? He he like got somebody's trunks, right, and hung them in Rampage's house because Rampage took him out. I think it was Liddell. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we know Dana is that way. He's, and, he's gonna have to take out the whole Stockton crew because he does. Yeah. He wants to go after Nick if he beats Nate. That that'll be a one eighty five, right? Yeah, oh that'd be God. awesome. <laughs> you see, could you imagine a one eighty five McGregor? This would be a big ass potato, dude. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be calling the McDouble. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if he loses, Dana's gonna say the same thing he said when Sage lost. When he was like, "I told him not to go to that weight class. I told him to stay in his own right. Bet you. Oh, He's yeah. gonna say something. Oh, that he had strep. Oh, yeah. yeah, get the excuse train rolling. Yeah. Well, I got, head strip. well, no matter what, Dana's always right. Uh, of course. <laughs> Good old Uncle Dana. So that, but so you don't think that if Nate wins, if he beats Conor McGregor, that they have to fight for the belt at 145? You know? Nate's not going to make 145. <laughs> yeah. So then you just give, Not even with like six helium balloons attached. Do you, do you, so do you just, do you just make, a, make a Conor belt for Nate? It's just a belt with Connor's <laughs> yeah, like Connor face and an extra. No, you need a shirt. It's like I beat Connor McGregor. All I, all I got it was a shirt. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works. I'm fine with that. I think yeah, it'd be if he loses. I think they'll make him go back down to 45. So oh yeah, he'll have to go back down to 145, and that that kills the Dos Anjos fight too at 55. Yeah. Big gamble by the UFC by tying this stuff up for so long, I, and I don't like it. And I, this is how I know that when when Nick does come back in what August, August, like they're gonna they're gonna announce it. Any day now, Nick Diaz versus Robbie Lawler, August 26th. That's, I'm, I'm calling it right now. Yeah? Yeah. You sure it's not going to be Nick Diaz against CM Punk? No. Oh, 100% positive. That's not right. I'm winning that money from God. CM Punk is never going to fight, ever. Uh, so so that I guess that kind of wraps up the news then. Yeah, yeah, now that officially wraps up the news. So we could jump into what happened last week. Well, we had Bellator. Bellator was, was a lot of fun. Is this the right one? This is probably not the right one. Here it is. There we go. Shamrock versus Gracie. We kind of, we kind of talked about this. Uh, the opening fights weren't too bad. Emmanuel Sanchez up against Daniel no. Pineda to split decision. That was an enjoyable one. Uh, Litton Vassal up against Emmanuel Newton to unanimous decision. And then Derek Campos and Melvin Gillard. Fucking Melvin, man. Dude, knock him the <laughs> fuck out. <laughs> just like nothing. Just memes. Yeah, so much for channeling Randleman, huh? Right. Dude, I'm going to come in there. I'm doing this for Randleman. <laughs> Somebody wake me up. He's, he's, he's napping for Randleman. There you go. <laughs> Kimbo Slice gets the win over Data 5000, like we said. Hoist Gracie gets the win over Ken Shamrock with a controversial win, I guess, with a knee that may or may not have grazed him in his old man berries. Yeah, Data uh, 5000 lost by a dart to the neck, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but there was a blow dart involved. I didn't, I didn't even see the blow that knocked him down. <laughs> <laughs> like his heart stopped he fell out he did like the Fred Sanford <laughs> he totally did it's the big one <laughs> it's the big one do you think do you think that the Hoist Gracie win was controversial at all anybody I, no I don't think so hey no. for what was it for a 52 year old and a 49 year old it was pretty stout 
<laughs> I don't know the delay. The delay on getting it in the nuts seemed to go like le- it was we've, very long. Yeah, very yeah long. for anybody who's ever been hitting the nuts, yeah. you know. Sometimes, sometimes they're no, I, yeah, it's like, you gotta uh, say like the like, grazer. What, what? Yeah, Ooh, the yeah. grazer. Sometimes yeah. they'll creep up into your stomach yeah. and you're just like Ooh. maybe he's got a big set of meaty clackers. But that's the thing too is that <laughs> when you watch it, it looked like the knee hit at the very at the belt line, not the I ball line. I just threw up in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> meaty clackers. No, I just threw up in somebody else's mouth. The fucking Newton's crazy. Effect the balls. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to that age, you have to wear depends under your fight shorts. <laughs> I think they both should have. Just in case. Just to... They're called defense. Defense. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it, defend it. <laughs> so there's your wrap up of that one. And then we also had UFC Fight Night Cowboy versus Cowboy, which was also an And we got to start all the way from Fight we Pass. We got to start all the way from Fight Pass. We had a, a cool opportunity to interview Ashley Evans Smith. Uh, and she went up against Mary Renault. And if you haven't heard that interview, well, you should definitely go and and give it a give it a listen. And you you heard her at the beginning of this episode. She's the one that brought it brought in the episode. Did the intro. And so we have Shamil something up against Anthony Hamilton with a unanimous decision, and then Lauren Murphy up against Kelly Fischl. This TKO. this was a war, dude. This uh, the Kelly took the fight eight days notice. She's out of the Bay Area. It was bloody. And they got fight of the night. It was yeah, they got fight of the night. Wow. It was bad. They did fight of the night I think it was fight than your fight. Did they just say that Kelly got offered to fill in for that I fight? I did. I got offered that fight. And she fight. turned it down. I did. What? Oh. I did. I got offered that fight. It could have been Kelly. The story Kelly. of two Kellys. <laughs> <laughs> she could have got that fit. All right, so Ashley Evan Smith, who we spoke with uh, last week, went up against Marion Renault with a split decision win, which Marion Renault is actually appealing. Yeah, I it's think very... she should. You think she could? I think she should. Really? I don't think I, I don't think she lost. Minute by minute? <laughs> minute by minute, I don't think she lost. Oh. I didn't see it. I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like she was controlling the pace. She was doing like she was down. Work. She was down strikes until the third. <sighs> I don't know. Well, I'll a, watch it again. That's, I mean, that, that's why <laughs> well, it's a split decision, and that's why there's right. controversy around well, it. Well, the big controversy is the scorecard. The scorecards and the fact that she knocked Ashley down a total like three or four different times. Mm. As to where Ashley only knocked her down once, and I don't even think it was, I think it was more of Renault falling. Yeah. And, and Renault almost got a choke in, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Moving yeah. on to your, uh, your prelims on Fox Sports 1, we had Nathan Coy. Get a win over Jonathan Webb, and then Anthony Smith gets a win over Leonardo Augusto Lilico, and then Oluwale Bamboos. <laughs> he won with his carnival name and everything, dude. <laughs> I love it. I, until I heard his name pronounced, like when we first announced him, I thought his last name was like Bang Bus. Like, yeah. it was close enough, Bang you know? Bus, huh? yeah, it was close enough. Bamboos. Oluwale Bang Bus. Uh, no, it's Bamboos, and he gets a win over Daniel Serafine Sarah, with a head kick and punches at one minute of the first round. It was nice. Oli Wally here to stay. Yeah. Sean Strickland up against Alex Garcia. This was a TKO in the third round uh, in favor of Sean Strickland. And then jumping on to your main card. Again, another good main card. I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. With uh, James Krause going up against Shane Campbell. This went to decision in favor of James Krause. <laughs> Chris Camozzi retired Joe Riggs. Dude, broke his forearm. That was crazy. How many uh, knees can you take? That's like, you know, how many licks does it take to get to <laughs> How many knees can your forearm take? And apparently it's six. Because <laughs> <laughs> on the six, your forearm just breaks. It just breaks. I, I don't think he knew he was taking them. The first, the first punch that came right down the pipe, I was like, it's over. And I was watching with my girlfriend. She's like, what are you talking about? I said, he's fucking done. The fight's over. And yeah. then he took those knees, and I was like, just fall over, Riggs. Ball over. That was that was brutal. Yeah, Kaposi looked like he was you. like he was doing some type of uh, aerobics. He did. Yeah, right. <gasps> he he just, the Tybo. It was Tybo. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop the fight, please. <laughs> Stop the fight. Uh, Dennis Bermudez up against Tatsuya Kawajiri. I, Kawajiri didn't really do anything in this fight. No, he didn't. And Mr. Menace, can you finish a fight, Sue? Please, <laughs> could you? If there's ever a fight that he should have been able to finish, this was it. Yeah, but Kawajiri was huge though. He was massive, <laughs> dude. <laughs> they said that he dropped down in weight class. Yeah, I Good think he thought they were fighting at 170. <laughs> I don't know what happened. And then uh, the CK model himself, Cody Garbrandt, Garbrandt up against Augusto Mendez. Cody no love. <laughs> like, I don't think my girlfriend saw the fight. She was just drooling over Cody. <laughs> Kelly's all, please. <laughs> <laughs> Another awesome TKO was Derek Brunson up against uh, Hong Canario, Carnero. God damn it. Uh, 
What do you think of that, that one, man? Brunson looked good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brunson looked real good. And one of the slicker triangle chokes that I think I've seen in the UFC, especially lately, was the was Donald Cerrone's top mount triangle over Alex Oliveira. Cowboy versus Cowboy uh, was good, man. Got that got that top mount triangle in, rolled him over, and Alex the slide, was just the done. transition was just over. You know, I was like, "What's he doing? No, he's not. Oh my god, there it is. <laughs> there it is. That was quick. Yeah, it really that was. was. Fast. And I was thinking before the fight started, like his submission game. We always underestimate his submission game, but he's got a really solid ground yeah. game. Because we always think of him as a kickboxer, but that was one of the more slick transitions I think I've ever seen him even pull off. It was almost like Alex let him do it. Yeah. Yeah, like, I didn't know what Alex was thinking when they're on the ground. I thought, why isn't he trying to get away? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like he was. He thought he had something on him. And it, it didn't work out that no, way. No, no. So big win for Donald right there, and uh, Alex loses the cowboy nickname. He needs a, he needs a new nickname now. <laughs> now he's just Alex. He's just Alex. <laughs> and then uh, tonight we have Bellator MMA going on. Uh, your main event is Venetia Spartan going up against Chet Congo. Did they change the main event? I thought it was different. Marcus Galval and Dantes. I thought they were fighting. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got Bobby Co- Cooper and David Rickles. Yeah. And then uh, Francisco France going up against Kendall Grove. Familiar name from the UFC. And then Chuck Willis, Bruce Willis's nephew, going up against Gaston <laughs> Reno. <laughs> and Rebecca Ruth going up against Lena Novals. <laughs> Ovic- Ovici Nikova. Dude, Hello. I've seen that. I, that Rebecca chick stole a car here in Modesto. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't. I wasn't going to say shit because I don't know who Kelly knows in the women's division. But fuck, that woman has had a hard life. Yeah. <laughs> she is going to be the first fighter in MMA to test positive for meth. Yeah, I didn't see. I didn't want. I didn't want. Like I didn't want to say her yeah. name. But yeah, that girl stole it's two like, cars. She <laughs> stole two cars. You know that pop-up man that said, look Fuck. up, look up ro- local criminal. Yeah. yeah, that's like the face you see, right? It's just, yeah, it's just. A, I'm sorry, but that's just a really bad picture. Yeah. That's that's. What I'm gonna go with that. It's a bad picture, and make sure you check her for car parts before. She does it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fuck, man. You know, when, you, when you're walking around Modesto and you got tweakers coming after you, you carry spare car parts and you just throw them out. Yeah. <laughs> they, don't pick or copper. Up, shiny up. copper. Oh, shiny copper. Just chuck it out. It's like throwing a flare. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Draw yeah, then you get them fight, e- fight each other and you run, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so you have the uh, <laughs> Anderson Silva versus Michael Bisping going out to the O2 Arena tomorrow night or tonight or it's in the future. I don't know. <laughs> Brazilian time? Uh, it's London. London time. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, so this will be happening. It says February 27th, but it already is February 27th there. I don't know, man. It's confusing. That is confusing. <laughs> so, uh, this thing sold out before they even announced what the card was going to be. I guess they just really wanted some fights over there in, in, the, uh, in the UK. Uh, so, I don't know. Where do you want to start, man? Is there anywhere you want to start? Do you think that's why there wasn't a lot of promotion behind this? Is because they sold out so quick? I think so. Yeah. It was completely unnecessary. I'm sure they, I totally forgot about this. I'm sure they promoted the hell out of it over there. Well, I UK. think just because there's been so much going on, that's right. why. It's a Fight Pass card, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. So, I can't, even, I can't even watch the damn thing? <laughs> <laughs> fucking boo. Well, if you bought Fight Pass. Yeah. I'm fucking broke and poor and so lazy. you're not going to watch my fight? I'm going to watch your fight. I'm going to buy Fight Pass just for your fight. <laughs> your fight's going to be my free trial, then I'm canceling the motherfucker. <laughs> and you have a future, and you have a future. Uh, I don't know where to start here. Let's start with uh, Scott Askham versus Chris Dempsey. Uh, also, Daniel O'Meal and Shazam Cook up against Jarjus Danho. Uh, Jarjus is undefeated, though, but he's familiar with him. Uh, Tom Breeze, undefeated as well, going up against Kita Nakamura, who's 31-6-2. That is some experience right there. Uh, Rustam Kabilov is going up against Norman Park, and then Gehard Musasi going up against Thales Laetis. Uh, those names we know. That's, that's an interesting fight. That's a lot of experience in that fight, too. Uh, who do you pick? Who we got? I'll take Musasi. Musasi? Yeah, I got Musasi. Musasi? I don't know who these guys are. <laughs> <laughs> Josh? I don't know what fight it is. Uh, Musasi. Yeah. I'm going to go against the room and say Laetis. Uh-oh. Yeah, why not? Uh, and then, of course, your main event is... It's so shitty that Michael Bisping finally gets to fight Anderson Silva when Anderson Silva doesn't have a belt. Like, yeah. Bisping is the red-headed stepchild of the UFC. But, the, I mean, he... Okay, he's, he's gone through, what, three eye surgeries now, right? 
Yeah, yeah and he still can't see straight. All right. And Anderson's got a big bar in his leg. Mm-hmm. I don't think fight. Bisping has a chance. He doesn't. I don't think he does either. You got a guy who hasn't knocked anybody out since his amateur career, since his early career. Right. He's got great hands. He's a points fighter. This is what he does. That's how he wins fights. And then every time he gets a shot at the actual belt, it's like, oh, you win this fight, your next fight's going to be for the championship. And then he loses. He gets his, you know, his, his eye socket broken or something. <laughs> <clears throat> and then we got Anderson Silva, who lost two times in a row to the same guy, broke his shin, came back, fought Nick Diaz. And then that fight's a no contest because of the, both of them pop positive for one thing or the other. Uh, but aside from that, Anderson Silva's a fight finisher. Oh, yeah. So that's where Michael Bisping is going to have some problems here. Is he going to be able to run from Anderson Silva the entire time? You could only hope. But he's not a runner, though, either. Yeah, but he's got a messed up leg. He could probably get away from him now. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson Silva just hobbling after his ass. <laughs> All right, so who are we picking on this one? I'm going Silva. 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 With his feet hand. Yeah. His feet hand. His feet hand. <laughs> With his feet hand. He's just, feet hands. Yeah, he's a finisher. He's so accurate. I don't know. Yeah, this makes hey. tough, but I don't think he's got the skills that Silva does. What I'm interested in here is uh, with with Bisping being, being the points fighter that he is and being really accurate with his kicks and punches, and as elusive as Anderson Silva is, I wonder how frustrated Bisping is going to get when he can't hit him. Yeah, that'll be That's fun great. to see. Yeah, of course I don't have Fight Pass, so I won't see it. Yeah, <laughs> as soon as it gets uploaded as a GIF, then I'll, then I'll watch it. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That wraps up this week's episode of Split Decision. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends. Find us wherever MMA podcasts are broadcast. Uh, Speaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, iHeartRadio, SplitDecisionMMA.com. Find us on Instagram and Twitter at SD underscore MMA. Throw us a like on Facebook at Split Decision MMA Podcast. Rolando and Kelly, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having us. Did you beat Lauren Murphy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) If you could turn back time. If I could turn back time, if you yeah. Could pull, if you could pull the share. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's it. Uh, big thanks to uh, what, Real Real One Two O Nine. Yeah, Real One Two O Nine. Thanks to Real One Two O Nine for the music at the beginning of the show, and uh, thanks to StrongboardBalance.com, MyMMANews.com, and it's uh, everybody from the Ruloff Family Studios. Say, have a good night. We'll see you at the fights. Peace.